Hello everybody, this is Etho, and welcome back guys to another episode of the Let's Play series. Hope you're having yourselves a wonderful day today. I am eating the microphone. I hope you're enjoying it. Hello, hello everybody, this is Etho, and welcome back guys to another episode of the Let's Play series. What you got, guy? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Three black uh. for one. That's not bad. I still haven't bought anything from these guys, like, <laughs> it's just so much cheaper to get it in nature, right? It's like, he, d he mostly just sells flowers. Um, I thought I would show you guys this, though, to start off with. We worked on this very briefly last time. Uh, basically, we're trying to do this biome enhancement thing in our world where we fill up all these plain, empty spaces we have. Like, we got the, all these empty plains here. It's nothing exciting, right? It's very standard. We're trying to ch transform them into something unique that stands out. Um, so this is just one idea I tried out, which I think turned out pretty good. Like, all we did is we put a path in here. I've lined the sides with leaves. And these are not custom acacia trees. These are just regular ones. But, like, you never see a forest of acacia trees, right? They're just scattered in savanna naturally. So... By putting them together like this, it kind of is a unique thing, just on its own. And what I did is I planted them two blocks up, so they're a lot taller than normal. And then I replaced the dirt block with logs, and overall, this is this is the final effect. We could decorate this more even, but just after like maybe 10 minutes of working on this, it, uh, it feels pretty good, right? So that was, I thought that was kind of cool. Uh, like, the big problem is, if you're doing this biome enhancement thing, is it takes a long time, a really long time to fill up space. Um, so that was, like, a nice quick thing that turned out pretty good, I felt. Anyways, let's go over here. We have this lake thing here, which I wanted to decorate a little bit. And I saw a really cool post on the Minecraft Reddit a while ago. And if you guys didn't see it, like, this is a, a neat idea, which you might use yourselves. Someone had the idea of using glass panes and then you put sea pickles on top and it kind of looks like a cattail, right? <laughs> uh, it would be nice if they were a bit more brown, the sea pickles, but I think the, I think the effect kind of works. I think it's a cool trick. So I'll probably scatter a few of those in here to, to decorate it a bit more. Uh-huh. So as you guys can probably tell, I am playing around with the audio settings a lot this episode again. Uh, thank you, by the way, very much for all the feedback on the last one, for helping me with my, my issues. Um, and also for being so understanding about the less than desirable quality of the episode. <laughs> uh, again, I wish I could tell you, like, I read everything you said and everything's perfect now, but I'm still really messing around with it, trying to get it perfect. I have solved a lot of the problems based on what you guys said. Um, mostly the static and chirping, I believe, is, is gone and the echoing effect. Um, I hope. Let me know if I'm wrong about that. Uh, but now the big the big question is, should I use an equalizer or not in the, the episode? So I started off eating the microphone with no equalizer on. Then that little intro I did was with the equalizer, with a lot of the bass removed from the audio. And now, probably for the rest of the episode here, I'm, I'll be talking like this with the no equalizer, just the raw my raw voice again, like we did in the previous episode. I'm about two inches from the microphone, which I think is about the the right distance. It sounds kind of kind of cool when I'm really close to it, but it's like uh, you get a lot of the pa sounds, you know, which isn't very good. Anyways, let's get to the episode here. I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about stuff we're doing here. So I did work on the lake here. I lined the the borders of the lake with uh, coarse dirt. I think it looks kind of cool. We got some cattails. Um, planted a few random plants and stuff, like dead shrubs. You can plant bamboo and, like, keep it as a decorative thing if you put string over top of it. It won't grow. So that's kind of a cool trick. And this area really reminded me of the area behind my Ethocorp on the Minecraft server. So I, I rebuilt my first custom tree I did. <laughs> the little, uh, lake monster. Um, which I think is kind of cool. I like that little guy. I think this is a slightly different version. I couldn't quite remember how to do it. I don't think the other one had arms. This one has arms. But uh, anyways, guys, we are going to get started on a pretty big project here today. I was just 
uh, collecting some resources together for it and is like, okay, I got to go get some hardened clay, but then is like, wait a minute. We got all these brown mushroom blocks still. We were using them as fuel before for our super smelter, but now it's like, what do we, what do, we do with these? <laughs> so maybe we'll use these or try them out today instead of using hardened clay for our main building material. Because these don't look that bad, right? Like this is the texture now. I, I think it's acceptable. And like we have so many already. Cool, cool. All right, so we have made our way out here. We've taken a long journey back to this Illager Fortress. <laughs> and it is a, it's a nasty place. It's really bad. Um, so our goal today is to try to make like a, a mob farm out of these guys. Um, basically, it, it'll spawn in these bannermen every so often. And whenever we kill them, we get the uh, bad omen effect and it stacks. Like I think it goes up to six, if I remember correctly. So, then when we enter a village, it'll spawn in a raid and we'll get different guys, like the, the guys with the axes and the witches and invokers. And we can farm them for different materials, like emeralds and stuff. Uh, but also, when we beat the raid, the villagers, if we set up some villagers nearby, they will give us gifts. So we can get quite a few resources from this, we can get experience from it. Overall, it's a potentially a pretty good mob farm. I have not really seen how anyone's built one of these. Like, I've seen creative versions, but I haven't seen, like, how do people go about surviving in survival? Because <laughs> I was thinking about it, it's like, they're just going to keep shooting me, and if I kill them, they'll just respawn, right? Uh, they spawn in a pretty big area around this fortress. I think maybe our first order of business here is going to be setting up a beacon. Oh no. No! <laughs> they found me. Right, let's get rid of that block. No, oh, they're still getting down. Resistance two. And we want strength and regen, maybe? Ah, you know what? It's uh, actually not too bad now. Uh, while I was setting up the beacon, I think a lot of them wandered like halfway down the cliff. And they're not really spawning up here anymore. It's just the odd one. So that's cool. That'll allow us to work in peace here. So the plan is... Oh, hello, guy. <laughs> I We got the regen and the strength and stuff. So if they do spawn, we can deal with them a lot easier now. Uh, but the plan is we're going to put a villager in the center of this tower, probably, like around here, protected so that they can't kill them. And then, but they're attracted to it, like they'll try walk up to it to kill it. Um, so we're going to then drop them down a hole. Uh, and then all we got to do is build a platform. So where is the center here? Probably right here, right? I'm going to assume. So we'll probably go one, two... Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Yep, oh, and I'm, I fall down. Uh, yeah, maybe we'll try 16 blocks out to begin with, like from the center here. 16 blocks out all around. Do like a circle. We can go up to 35 blocks out from the center point, though, like if we want. But if we go like all the way to 35, it's going to take the guys a long time to walk up to the villager here and fall down, right? So we don't want them to have a long transport time. Oh, that's where they all are. <laughs> oh, snap. Okay. I hope they can't get up here. I don't think they can. Or they would have already. They would have already. Yeah, so we'll fill this in with mushroom blocks. But my plan is to go vertically instead of horizontally out. So we'll probably have several layers. Oh, and you can see they can spawn like when I'm up here even, like right next to me which is kind of interesting. One thing I did test out that I thought was a little odd or a little different, like when Guardian Farms came out, if you had an old world and you went to the location where they should have spawned in your world, there would be no temple or anything there, like no structure. But if you placed water down, they would be able to spawn in that water. But with these uh, outposts, uh, I went to a location in my world here where it, one should have spawned and like nothing Nothing spawned there, like, um, it never created the zone where they can spawn in, and there's no structure there either. So, 
we have to go really far out in our world to find a spot like this where they will actually spawn in. There's none close to our base that we can use. And with our build here, I don't have any super detailed plans or anything like that. We're kind of just winging it as we go here. So uh, we'll do a couple tests as we're building this to figure out how we need to change it. So I, we're going to go away here and come back and just get an idea of how quickly they will spawn on that platform and how many spawn. Uh, and then we'll know if we need to increase the spawning space, like maybe go 20 or 24 blocks on the circle. And also like how many layers we probably need to do. So if we come back, you can see there's a bunch of them not on the platform. There's one there, one there, one there. So if it was a, a bigger platform, they would have spawned on it. We've got one guy in the middle, I can see. Guy up there. A couple guys up there, actually. Uh-huh. But overall, I think only one, maybe two spawned on it, actually. So that's not very good. <laughs> that's actually a lot worse than I expected. I thought we'd get maybe five or something like that. Well, let's try it again. Could have gotten unlucky that time. Go away and come back. Should let them despawn and respawn here. All right, all right. It'll be better once we remove all this land that they're not supposed to spawn onto. Um. Hmm. No, we got one. <laughs> all right. So yeah, we probably need a lot more space. All right, very good, very good. We've been making some progress here. Uh, it's probably an hour or two later now, and you can see I've started on the second layer. I have expanded this first layer to 20 blocks uh, radius, and I've even been clearing underneath here. So I, I switched the beacon over to haste, and probably gonna go down at least another 10 blocks here. Look how quick they spawn down here, though. It's crazy. <laughs> um. So, I discovered something here that made me very sad. Uh, I thought one of the biggest problems in this game for the longest time, let's see if it'll show up here. It should. It's very annoying, annoying working here, by the way. I'm constantly getting shot. I think we'll try to go get some invisibility potions. We gotta refuel on food. We're out of mushroom blocks. Our tools are about to break and stuff, so we gotta head back to base. But yeah, ghost blocks, ghost blocks everywhere guys uh, I did that whole ice farm like cleared all the land for it without encountering a single ghost block I thought they fixed it but they're still in the game I'm so sad about that because <laughs> it's so annoying see all the arrows bouncing off of them like it's so bad there's so many of them I know I've said this before many times probably, but one of the best tricks that I recommend people do is always bring several ender chests with you. Always have them on you. Uh, not only is it very convenient, you can access all your stuff, right? But if you ever go out on an exploration adventure or whatever, and you want to get back, uh, it's always nice to be able to just break them down and have obsidian on hand so you can make a portal. Look at this. Beautiful. Didn't have to go mining for it or anything. And of course, you always want to complete the corners of your portals. Don't cheap out. Alright, and there we go. Let's see where this takes us in the nether. Um, another thing I kind of recommend is like when you build your nether tunnels, if you can, uh, go out the four cardinal directions. And like try to have the tunnels set up around zero zero. So like when I'm out here, let's see if I can find it. So I know uh, we we got to go this way to get to zero. And I know my nether tunnels are at zero. So if I come out at a random spot in the nether, I can usually find my tunnels just because they're at zero zero. I think. <laughs> oh, we got to go this way probably though. Uh, it should be somewhere around here, I would think. I think I have them at Y64. Yeah, right over there. Look at that. Beautiful. Awesome. All right, guys. So we are back at the main base here, and we have re-geared. got our tools re-equipped and, and stuff. We're going to head back after we do a couple harvests on our brown mushroom farm here. So we plant the brown mushrooms in the holes. 
and then we go over here. I did write down like the instructions because I kind of forget between harvests always. <laughs> so step one, plant them, put them in the hole. Step two, grow, press to grow, hit the button. That sends bone meal to all of them all around the farm here. You see them all popping up. Uh huh, uh huh. I'm playing with my, uh, by the way, I'm playing with my field of view a little higher than normal, 80. Some of you guys said it was bad before, even though it's like, it was at what I normally play at, so. I guess we'll try it out for today, but it feels a little weird to me. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, and then step three here, we go harvest. One thing that's kind of changed since we last used this farm is these these stem blocks are actually collectible now. Before they would just turn into brown mushroom blocks. And now they have their own texture, which we can use for building, and they're nice. So that's pretty cool. Uh, so we got it all harvested. Now we need to collect all the drops together. So we just go back over here, hit collect. And that sends the water down. Releases some minecarts underneath that go and pick up the drops in the hole. I think. I think. <laughs> oh, yeah, there they go. It's like, where are the minecarts? I don't hear them. All right, good stuff. I think we got the second layer of the mushroom done. Um, I wanted to try something now, so we did we did grab some potions when we were back home. Invisibility potions, I want to try those out. We also have golden apples and weakness potions if we can find a zombie villager, because we need to get a zomb or a villager for the middle here. And like the closest village I found is a few hundred blocks away, so it's not going to be practical to move them. Um, I think we may need to take off our armor, right? This is like one of those things you can regret really quickly. <laughs> I'm gonna jump down and they're just gonna pincushion me, I know it. Alright, we're invisible. Oh, I've actually never seen the icon for that yet. That's kinda cool. Ooh. Okay. Hey guys, how's it going? We, we buddies? Can you see me? Looks like I'm totally invisible. Yeah, I can I can clear safely. Oh, that guy found me. Okay, not not entirely invisible. I think when I selected my pick, maybe they saw me. No, he can see me already too. Okay, get the gear back on. <laughs> That's not gonna work. Oh, oh, all right, run away, run away. Oh snap everybody, we finally did it here. I have been clearing land for hours. You know, I got some videos going in the background during it. It was, it was fine, it was enjoyable. But yeah, hours and hours of land clearing here. Uh, I thought when we first started this, they were gonna spawn... I'm not done, you can see one guy spawned here. But for the main area, we got most of it done here. Uh, I thought they were only going to spawn maybe 10 or 15 blocks underneath the outpost, but no, it goes way down, like 25, maybe 30 blocks underneath. Uh, finally, at this layer here, the pillagers stop spawning and hostile mobs are spawning. So, above that, hostile mobs did not spawn at all in the area. Um, and interesting, like, interestingly, like one layer above this, or maybe it was two, uh, both hostile mobs and the pillagers could spawn together. There's like one layer or two of them where that can happen. Otherwise, they, they spawn separate from each other. Also, uh, while building this, I had one pretty big observation. I didn't realize beforehand here, but they seem to prefer spawning in dark areas over light areas, even though they can spawn in the light areas. Um, like if you If you look in here, like they're spawning inside the... Kind of looks like an ice cream sandwich. <laughs> We've got the two layers of the cookie and the vanilla in between or whatever. They seem to spawn in there a lot faster than they do on top. Uh, even though I do see the odd guy on top every so often. So, And when they were spawning down there, they seem to always spawn closer to the dark area. Instead of on the outside. So darkness seems to be important. We'll probably want to close off the walls of our farm here. You guys want to see a cool trick? Check this out. So, with the scaffolding, let's start at 60 here. We can use them to measure vertical height. 
actually, which is really cool. So we started with 60, we have 32 left, so that's 28 blocks up. Huh? <laughs> it's like a vertical measuring tape, it's awesome. Good stuff, alright, so I think the next order of business to building our farm here is we're going to start slabbing... Maybe let's go for the stone slabs. They're a little bit fancier. I'm going to start slabbing the top of this mountain here. So we've cleared out all the land. Main reason of that was I was curious how far they would spawn from the tower. But also, uh, we made sure there's no hidden caves inside the mountain there that they're going to spawn and get stuck in. Or uh, Also, they were spawning on the side of the hills all over the place. So now we don't have to worry about that. Um, but what we do kind of want to stop now is hostile mobs from spawning here because I think that'll take up the mob cap. And we want to keep that free for the pillagers to spawn. Ah, uh, yeah, very good, very good. So we got it all slabbed out on, on top of the hill there. So no more hostile mobs in that dark spot. Or during the nighttime, it'll be completely empty. Uh, so that's all good. We just got to cut away like part of the cliff there. Probably like something like that to stop them spawning on there. I see one guy there already. But overall, I think we got most of the prep work ready for this farm. And unfortunately, I just checked the time on the episode, and <laughs> uh, that's pretty much all we're going to be doing today, I guess. I've, I've been at it for a while here. But before we wrap up here, I at least want to show you the idea we're going to try out with this. So we got to get a villager at the center here for each layer, right? The thing I want to try out, which I'm not sure if it'll work, I kind of think it has a good potential to work. It might be cool for a lot of mob farms. Is I'm gonna probably set up trap doors in the center. Oh, not there. Something like actually for the top one, we gotta do differently. I think we're gonna do it like this. Yeah, we'll make them come out like this, and then like that. I think is the plan. Um, there will be water. Like a water column in the center. So those trapdoors hold it in place. This will... We want to keep this open so that the villagers can see the villager in the center here. He's going to be in the water. Um, and we're going to set up bubble streams so that he'll like float up and down through the water. So that we don't have to have a villager on every level. And because he's in a bubble stream, he won't suffocate either, I'm pretty sure. Um... The thing I'm concerned about, though, is as he passes up here, there's a brief opportunity where they can shoot him and kill him. But I think there, it takes like a second at least, so I think in that time they'll see him, but he's gone by the time they react. And, and then what we gotta do probably is like remove some of the ground here. I think if we have a trap door here and one here, they will walk off there as they try to get him. But we won't know until we can test it out, because I haven't done that yet. Like I said, we're winging the farm. <laughs> but hopefully that works. I think that'll be a cool idea. And you could use that for, assuming it does work, you could use that for other farms, like, uh, with wolves and ocelots. Like, if you're doing it in a hostile mob farm, you know, that might be a cool thing. Like, the one we have underneath my sand pyramid, it's got, like, over 20 dogs and and cats in, right? That's a real pain to set up. It's nice when it's all done, but like if you could get away with just using one wolf and one cat or one villager for this farm, it's a lot easier in survival to build that. But uh, yeah, anyways guys, I think we're gonna have to wrap up the episode here for today and we're gonna do it talking about, of course, audio problems. <laughs> and we'll probably keep doing that until I get them right. Uh, but yeah, I, I want to thank you again for the feedback on the last one. I think we did get a few of the issues solved, thanks to what you told me. But again, let me know if you hear static or audio artifacts or anything weird. Uh, I, I don't think I have the best uh, sense of that. Like Usually I'm pretty good at picking up subtle nuances or weird details and things. But when it comes to audio... Not so much, I find. <laughs> um, so it's really hard to like figure out what sounds better and what doesn't. Um, so your feedback is much appreciated. I guess let's get to the comment of the day here. It says, Etho, the AT2035, that's the microphone I'm using, is a condenser XLR microphone. So it's not USB, it's a special audio cable. 
that needs proper phantom power to power it. It's an analog uh, signal. Um, you need to hook it up to a USB audio interface that can supply the necessary voltage to it. So that audio interface converts it from an uh, analog signal into a digital one, and it connects the computer with a USB cable then. Otherwise, it will not work properly. And yeah, I, I have done that. I didn't clarify that on the last episode. I have the Focusrite Scarlet Solo, I think, second generation uh, audio interface with phantom power enabled. So that shouldn't be an issue. But even with phantom power enabled, I'm finding it really hard to get enough gain on the microphone, enough volume. Uh, I got it pretty much cranked to the maximum on the audio interface. Thankfully, I was able to get rid of all the software gain I was using, which I think was distorting the audio a bit. But, uh, yeah, maybe what we'll do, let's hop over to the equalizer, and I'll show you guys what that, how that works. Uh-huh, yeah, so check this out. This is pretty cool. This is uh, the equalizer I'm using, and as I'm talking here, you can actually see the wave shape of my voice. Uh, at the top here, you can see the different categories of the waves. So we got the sub-bass on the left, then it goes bass, low-mid, mid, high-mid, high and treble on the far right. That's like the really high pitch sounds, like S's. S you see when I do that, it goes mostly into the treble. Uh, or also F's. Uh, while sub bass is like P. Whenever I do the P's, you know? Pa, pa. But generally when I'm talking, it's bass to low mid. Not a lot of mid and like very little high mid. So this is what the equalizer settings I played around with. Uh, what I figured sounded the best to me. Uh, I'm going to start turning them on here, and it should affect my voice as I enable them. So right now, I've got minus 5 dB on the sub bass. Then we turn this one on. i got minus 2.8 dB or decibels on uh, the bass. And then if we go to number 3, that'll go minus 3.5 dB on the low mid, so the kind of yellowish color here. At 4 is the mid, we got that at minus 4 dB, and then for 5 I left at 0, and 6 I set to minus 2 dB, that's the, the treble, the high pitch sounds, because I noticed when I was doing S's, they kind of lingered a lot, you know, they were overpronounced. I think by lowering that it helps it out. So overall I felt this was the best I could get with the equalizer, it removes a lot of the bass from my, my voice and makes it a lot more punchy. But I'm not sure really if I should change any more of this. I'm maybe raise the this stuff a little bit more. Oh, I don't know if you guys can see that. <laughs> let's go. Let's maybe set this. I had it at five before, and you guys said it sounded like a tin can microphone. So um, maybe we could go up to two or something, and then this at two. I don't know. I feel like. I feel like I need to change something though, it's not quite right. So maybe if you guys got any feedback on that, let me know. And yeah, those are the same settings I used in the intro when we were around the lake there and at the acacia trees, the first two minutes of this video. So did you like how that sounded or did you prefer the rest of the video? I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, I'll, I'll uh, probably end it here for today. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye bye.